Hi, Rich Toronto here. Uh, we're at the CTIA 2010 show in Las Vegas. Thanks for watching. Today on the program is Jeff Ross with the uh, NetNet Group. He's the managing director. Uh, Jeff, thanks for being here. Great. Thank you. Could you uh, give us an overview of your company, please? Sure. Yeah, we're a consulting practice uh, that's focused on providing business development, product management, marketing services, mostly to companies that are trying to figure out how to make sense of this whole crazy app, app store space that's out there. I've uh, been de developing apps uh, since my first app in 1997 while I was at uh, Qualcomm Incorporated. So I've been actually building apps uh, a lot longer than the uh, crazy, crazy iPhone Android craze that's going on right now. That was before the, the days of Brew by a few years, I think, by right? By a few years, yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, the very first uh, apps that we did were uh, WAP apps and then they were on Palm. They were actually the original Palm operating system. We did a, did a phone back in the Qualcomm Kyocera days. The phone was about this big, and it was basically a phone and a palm stuck together. But we had apps, and we sold apps and uh, preloaded apps on them, yeah. Yeah, that brings back the days of the Palm 7 and that whole uh, mm -hmm. phone app revolution. The early days, like you said, yeah. the WAP integration. Yeah. WAP was supposed to be the future, but it was just too, um, I guess it was just too text-based, right? Well, you, you know, the same rev revolution that was going on with WAP, you also had the revolution of the Internet happening as well and when you compared what was going on in the rich feature big screen internet world to translate that to this little tiny phone which back in those days wasn't even color yet didn't have a camera phone it was black and white it wasn't really a translation to say hey computer this is the internet and oh it's also the internet on your phone it really wasn't the same right experience. but then it's so, kind of interesting that Twitter would have been fine in that kind of interface and Twitter now is so popular isn't that amazing how popular Twitter's become and it's such a simple interface but yeah most most, uh, I, you look at the iPhone, the reason it's successful is because of its rich internet type interface, right? Web oh, interface. Oh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Like a desktop. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was so many of the ingredients of what Apple's done it has been around from a technology standpoint for years and years, but what they did that was so brilliant is they really combined the total experience together in a phone and a software and a service interface tied back to iTunes where people already had their credit card information stored where they got their music today with a you know 75 80% market share whatever they had so they were able to really put all the pieces together to really facilitate the easy easy purchase um, and acquisition of applications but more importantly what they did for developers is they allowed developers to really update and change those things and push them out to individuals so when people bought an app they're actually using the app a lot and for a long period of time right. it doesn't become stale because developers can upgrade those and push those things out and it goes on and on from there I mean, sure. it's the same exact thing is happening with Android uh, with Palm and the Palm Pre and Palm Pixie as well as moving that same model back down to the feature phones as well so yeah yeah absolutely so if I'm a carrier and I'm I'm looking for um, how to ways to cash in on this Wild West opportunity of the app stores uh, why do I call you <laughs> um, you know I, I don't Although I've sold products for years and years of carriers, I don't really do that right now. What I focus most on are the companies that are really on the app side that are trying to figure out, I've oh, got this so the, app, how do I get this thing distributed? Oh, I see. So you work with app developers to push out through the various app stores. Right, right. I see. You know, for, okay. for an example, I mean, if you look at, uh, you take Verizon, for example. Verizon has multiple storefronts that they have based off a different platform. Right. Um, and in some situations, let's so take BlackBerry, uh, there's actually two storefronts on there. There's the BlackBerry app world, and then there's the Verizon storefront, what they call VCast storefront. Sure. So, you know, for a lot of developers that are coming from an Internet-centric viewpoint of all these channels, with Apple is they build once, they distribute once, they get a check from Apple, everything's great. But when you want to branch out from iPhone and get into all these different platforms and all these storefronts, whether that storefront comes from a carrier or the storefront comes from an OEM, like a Motorola, for example, or an LG, or a Samsung, or a third party, for example, a Handspring, excuse me, a, a, a Handmark or a Hand Dango. Um, you know, those are another storefronts, and you know, it seems like uh, Matricity today announced another storefront. So there's a lot of different storefronts out there. It can be a little overwhelming for developers that have really great, interesting ideas for applications, but don't necessarily understand how exactly you distribute and make money off those applications, especially for the U.S. market. And so I would imagine that your value grows as the number of app stores grows, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, that's a, that's a popular uh, uh, topic uh, at this conference as well as the last year or so about the fragmentation. You know, everybody wants to see Synergy. They can write an app once and it's going to run across all phones. Uh, I've heard that talk now for 12 years. It, it's not going to happen anytime soon. So um, the fragmentation is going to continue to persist. And it's not only fragmentation from how you build an app for 
a handset, but it's also the fragmentation of how you distribute that through all these sure. different storefronts that are out there. So, yeah, there, there's a lot of people that need help and guidance on that. Now, there are companies that are that are providing a middleware sort of app, like uh, Roll Mobile, and a few others where you write to them and then they distribute out sure. to the various phones. Um, have you looked at any of those, or? Um, you know, a little bit, uh, a little bit. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of middleware kind of players in there that are providing those services to actually, you know, let me help you garage shop, get your stuff out to everywhere. I tend to work with companies that are more established, that really come from an internet or a traditional enterprise software standpoint. Got it. So not necessarily the not garage the, the shops. the one guy, right, the garage, right, what I was right. going to say next. But the companies that really have an established presence right. that mobile is new to them, even though their core business and core technology may be, may, may, be, may be older. So maybe even a media company, let's say a newspaper company or someone like that that's looking to sure. deploy. Okay. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I, uh, I actually, uh, among the many things that I've done, I used to run a uh, CEO of a company uh, called Nine Squared, which is now owned by, by Zed out of Madrid, Spain, one of the largest players in the ringtone space in the U.S. A huge, huge, massive business, and that's all about mobile entertainment, right? Taking music, sure. and distributing that through whether it's ringtones and wallpapers, sure. full music tracks, ringbacks, things of that nature. So yeah, yeah, it's a, it, all the philosophies of how to distribute products, whether that be an application or content, are really kind of the same, and it, it can be confusing again for just about anybody in this industry. Sure, so, sure. Even I get confused well, sometimes, even the I've been doing it forever. The so. platforms are, are just growing exponentially, right? Yeah. So that's, it's uh, the app stores, the platforms. So um, it's very exciting. So what's next for your company? You know, one of the clients that I'm working with right now, I, I absolutely love what they're doing. Um, uh, it's a company called MyTech Systems out of San Diego. Um, it's a company that's been around for a long time in image processing. So they take documents and they do cool things with them. They make them look better and they OCR them up and they take the ASCII out and they put them into reports. They've taken their technology and put that into mobile now. And uh, they're, 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 their biggest product they're doing right now is something called Mobile Deposit. And uh, it's a very simple concept that anybody can get. Uh, People get checks. The checks, right? I think I've seen you this You get a app. check, you take a picture right. of that check, and it's then uploaded and electronically transferred directly into your banking account, for example. So, you know, in the U.S., checks aren't going away anytime soon. They're still a viable part of not only small, medium-sized businesses, but on a personal level, right. you still get checks and rebates. I have two like. in my wallet, actually. There right you now, go. That I, I, need, I need to deposit. So there's a simple, simple ROI associated to that. I've got a check. How long is it going to take me to get that into the bank? Do I have to go to a bank? Can I get into an ATM machine? Um, well, gee, it's only a check for $15. Do I really want to drive for a $15 check? There's a pretty simple ROI. I if, can I just take a picture of this thing, get it uploaded, get it into my account for a very small transactional fee? So that, that's what their model is. And it, it, uh, I was at yesterday at the uh, Mobile uh, Over Money Summit, and uh, um, it, that was probably one of the hottest topics there. Was you, you, you know, it, It's not so much about... I've got this check, I need to get into my account, but I need, I've got this check, I need to get into my account because I want to spend that money. So how do I do that fast and efficiently? And really with today's phones, the iPhone, Blackberry, Android, all of them, camera's great, right. high speed connection, there's all this processing power so you can actually do stuff to fix the image because you know people take pictures in all sorts of situations, bad lighting, they've sure. got crinkled, maybe they've ruffled up the actual check itself. Could, could have been in their wallet for weeks while they traveled there across go. the country. There you go. There you go. Two of them, For example, it's possible. That's right. So <laughs> so how do you fix that image, put it into a D, 2D, pull off all the important checking information, the amount and the routing information right. so you can get it processed. So that's what this company does. I, I've been and around. how do you help them? Um, specifically, kind of like what I, what I mentioned to you, they've got their solution and they're looking for help in terms of all the different Just ways to get it, it distributed. It's awesome. Yeah. Because there's, you know, there's so many different distribution paths for that. Banks want this technology. Individuals want this sure, technology. Sure, I'm going to give it a shot when I uh, get back to the hotel room. Yeah, great. So I appreciate it. Thanks for being on the program, and good luck. Great, thank you. All right, thanks.